Well, thank you to our Daily Caller audience for joining us today. My name is Jorge Ventura, and we'll be discussing the events that transpired on Wednesday from a firsthand account from our reporters who were on the ground. Trump spoke at the Stop the Steal rally on Wednesday that drew out hundreds and thousands of his supporters to Washington, D.C. But after he spoke, his supporters marched to the U.S. Capitol building where they breached the Capitol building. And by now, you have seen the videos and footage that has come out from that day. Four people have died and 52 people have been arrested, according to D.C. police. Here we have some of our field reporters who were on the ground that day to give you some of the first hand accounts from what they saw and what transpired that day. We'll start off, we'll start off with Lisa Benetton, who was on the the ground lisa kind of take us through what you saw and what was your what was your perspective from on the ground yeah i got to the capitol pretty early on after trump's speech and watched the crowd really gather pretty quickly um, around the capitol building and police tried to disperse the crowd with tear gas flashbang grenades and pepper spray and ultimately were not able to and the crowd stormed up kind of around the sides and through the scaffolding that was actually set up for the inauguration and that might have um, made it more difficult for police to get to the protesters and at that point um, protesters were able to get to the Capitol from what I saw started smashing the windows and went into the started going in and out of the Capitol, Capitol building. Also before the Trump supporters breached the U.S. Capitol building you actually interviewed some of the Trump supporters what were they saying and what was the general atmosphere? There was definitely mixed messages going on some were there um, just peacefully one individual I talked to was there, um, you know, he said, why haven't we broken down the barriers yet? I think it's time to go in. And actually in that moment, you saw um, the barriers come down. Um, so it was definitely a lot of mixed messages, some angrier people really wanting to go in. And again, like I said, more peaceful people um, who were a little scared of all the, the flashbang grenades and all of that. Vince, kind of take us from what you saw and what was your perspective from on the ground? Yes, I got into, uh, I got near the Capitol right after Trump's speech and um, at the bottom people were just congregating, uh, several people were playing uh, bagpipes, instruments, drums, and then we began to move up to the Capitol and when I got there it was pretty much filled up to the rim already surrounding the entire area, um, but I made my way through to the very front, the very front entrance where um, the uh, many of the Trump supporters had um, surrounded the section, and then when I got up to the, to the top entrance, one guy started smashing a window, and the Trump supporters started screaming at him, saying, "We don't do that. We don't destroy things." And they started saying, "F Antifa, F Antifa." I heard someone say that um, a woman was killed near the front of the entrance, but I couldn't quite tell if they were talking about the girl who was shot. I don't know if they died around the same time. If there was a girl who was shot inside, but I heard some guy saying that this woman died. I think I, I'm. I think it was one of the women who died of medical uh, for medical reason. Uh, she was sick. She was probably ill. I think she had like died from panic or heart attack, perhaps. I'm not sure because I haven't. I haven't found out exactly what happened on that. I, what was the cause of death? But I know it was, for, it was because of medical purposes and the chaos surrounding the area. And then after that, it started becoming more hectic. Then uh, some of the supporters started smashing the windows uh, and went inside and started pulling out furniture. They started pulling out furniture and they were passing it down. They were throwing some of the furniture inside of the, of the entrance where the riot police was standing. Now, our video director, Richard McGinnis, actually went into the U.S. Capitol building and got to document of what transpired inside the building during this time. Richie, take us to, through your accounts. And were you afraid that you might uh, might have got arrested during this time? I started outside the Capitol and I was actually on the media tower that was set up for the inauguration. That was the most elevated position. And, and from there, I basically saw the, the police lines completely collapse. And I watched the stream of uh, protesters, rioters, whatever you want to call them, run towards the Capitol, many of them running into the building. Some of them, you know, didn't. They just stood up on the steps and waved flags. But uh, there were at, at least dozens of people that I saw at, at the very onset sprinting into the Capitol, uh, which when I scaled down the, the tower and I followed a group that went in to the Capitol Rotunda and I followed them actually all the way to the House doors. And uh, at that point, there was only one or two police officers who were by the doors on the exterior. And they were attempting to clear uh, maybe six or seven protesters 
uh, out of that area. And so they were actually outnumbered before reinforcements arrived. And that, that standoff, there was a short standoff in front of those doors before they were able to remove uh, the individuals that were blocking uh, that passageway. And actually, after seeing the photos, there were actually guns drawn on the other side of those doors. And after that, we were basically pushed into the rotunda where we got sandwiched. Uh, pro some, basically, there was a, there's some narrow doors at the entrance and exit of the rotunda. And they were trying to force the protesters, they being uh, MPD, out of the room. And protesters were pushing back. And I was caught in the middle at the front line of the protesters. So it was basically a lot of people were complaining of being asphyxiated and not being able to breathe. And it was just really tight in there. And everybody was packed like sardines. So uh, it took a while for them to clear the protesters out of that rotunda. It took about 20 minutes. But then finally, once once we were out, uh, it, I basically took off my mask and, and called it a day after that. I actually arrived at the scene between 4.30 and 5. This is about an hour after U.S. Capitol Police have cleared the crowd from inside the U.S. building. We saw U.S. Capitol Police on the steps of the U.S. Capitol uh, defending it when I got on the ground. But that's when the crowd actually kind of turned their anger at uh, AP journalists and reporters who were there uh, reporting. And they destroyed their camera equipment, came came after them really aggressively. The media group actually had a, a barricade fence def uh, blocking them off from everyone. But the crowd came. They shook the fence, took the fence down, threw things at them. And then you could see actually in the video that I took a man with American flagpole smashing the camera equipment and destroying what the reporters had the reporters got out of got, got out of there so fast that they didn't even take their camera equipment but later in the night things kind of calmed down once the curfew was intact that was that was my first house first hand accounts from on the ground but just wanted to say to our audience thank you so much for tuning in make sure you're following daily caller on youtube and subscribe hit that bell button so you're notified when we drop our videos we have so much more footage coming out from what transpired on wednesday stay tuned as we'll have that make sure you also go on daily call dailycaller.com and keep up with all of our latest articles thank you so much for tuning in